that opened up to the girlfriend wife when they asked you to open up and be more vulnerable? How did it work out for you? Story 1. My wife became more understanding of what all I shoulder and worry about every day even if my face doesn't always show it. She was able to be the reassuring voice I needed when things would get rather rough for me. She always looked at me like the rock of our family, I being the youngest in my family before we met. I held that position too with my siblings and parents. I mean, I always find a way through no matter what, but it was nice for her to understand the pressure I have on me at times that she was completely unaware of. She's the yin to my yang, and I couldn't have asked for a better person to go through this thing called life with. Sometimes we take for granted what the people we love go through in order to keep things smooth for everyone else. Story 2. She pleaded with me for weeks to open up to her about what was bothering me. She was known to be a bit of a gossip, so I was reluctant but she swore that she'd take it to her grave. Two weeks after we went to her family's place for Thanksgiving, and they were all painfully aware, some consoled me, some were uncomfortable, and some just laughed. The relationship didn't last. Story 3. Asterisk. And if I show you my dark side, asterisk, asterisk, will you still hold me tonight? Asterisk. And if I open my heart to you, asterisk, asterisk, and show you my asterisk, 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 weak asterisk, 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 side, asterisk, asterisk, what would you do? Asterisk. Would you sell your story to Rolling Stone? Asterisk. Would you take the Ren away? Asterisk. Asterisk. And leave me alone? Asterisk. And smile in reassurance. Asterisk. Asterisk. As you whisper down the phone? Asterisk. Would you send me packing? Asterisk. Or would you take me home? Pink Floyd. The final. Story 4. To all the women coming on here to say, not all women are evil. Some of us really do want men to be vulnerable or something similar. Try to understand something. I could give a whole rant about how much hate men get for doing the same thing every time a woman chimes in to say, all men are X, Y, Z, I won't give you hate for it. What I will say is that it might not be asterisk all asterisk women, but it's more than enough to feel that way. I have my own stories, and it isn't just significant others either. Friends that are girls and female family members are just as guilty of this behavior in my life. Just about every guy has at least one story of a girl hitting him below the belt because she got mad or upset at something. Most guys end up saying never again and close themselves off because it's the better option than just hoping it doesn't happen again. You want to do something about it? You want to prove you can be trusted? Hold the women around you accountable for their poor behavior. Fudge the sisterhood and do the right thing even though it isn't the easy thing to do. Maybe look at your own behavior and try to do better. It won't solve the problem, but it's a good step to help make that happen. Story 5. I'm not a man, but I have had a friend tell me his answer to this exact question a few months ago when it came up in our own conversation. His first long-term girlfriend was somebody he didn't feel safe openly sharing his feelings with, and he's never made that mistake again. He now starts talking about his own feelings with people he likes before they actually get together. And if they have negative reactions, he just rules them out as potential dates. Story 6. It never has once worked out. I'm not insane or anything either, but the second you start voicing your fears and concerns and insecurities, you will not ever be seen the same way again. Your partners will tell you otherwise. It is never true. They had a version of you they met that they thought was bulletproof. And when they find out you're not, things tend to go south fast. Be honest, but keep things to yourself often. There will be people that respond to this that disagree. They want to believe what they are saying is true. It's not. Story 7. From my personal experience, 80 to 90% of the girls will lose interest in you the moment you show any kind of weakness. The other 10 to 20% will be wonderful and supportive. Also, keep in mind that a chunk of the 80 to 90% will pretend to be supportive because they don't want to feel like bad people, but will lose all interest in you and the relationship will crash either way. The real ratio might be different, of course. Maybe I just got unlucky since this is just my personal experience. Story 8. I dared to try and have a conversation about needs in therapy and I got ridiculed for it. Needless to say, I froze. I didn't know what to do with someone who told me how much they wanted to be there for me and then ridiculed me dot for reaching out. What's worse is she complained to me about her not getting enough space for her to be her in sessions. What's worse worse is that when things were clearly not going well in therapy, she started trying to tell me how much I didn't have to do it all alone and offered if there was anything more she could do in therapy to let her know. Again, what do I do? Does she mean it this time? Does she not? Is this another setup for ridicule? The kicker was how she accepted no responsibility for these no-win situations or anything in sessions because she felt like she wasn't responsible. She claimed the feedback I gave her left her feeling like an emotional punching bag. And even though she had sent me emails telling me how she never felt in danger with me in session, there was something in my eyes going back to the start of therapy. So to sum up, manipulated into being used for their needs, ridiculed for daring to try and advocate for myself, 
attempted to be pulled back in with reassurances or promises, then flipping Darvod. I wouldn't recommend it. Story 9. I can only speak in my own experience. On the few occasions I opened up with my girlfriends and showed vulnerability, the relationships usually took a turn for the worse, and the close relationships certainly dried up. If I have to really open up about something, that's when I call my mother. That's my personal safe space to open up and show any vulnerability. Story 10. Opened up to my now ex and she told me to just suck it up and man up. From then on, I decided to never really open up my feelings to her even though she asked. It wasn't until a lot of communication on how I felt and me telling her how she reacted is why I shut down whenever we had deep conversations about our feelings. Eventually, she learned to listen and was supportive. But like most women I meet, they still have a toxic way of thinking that masculinity means showing no emotion. I've learned that it's usually women that show empathy rather than just talk about it are the ones that are supportive. Story 11. Every time I opened up, one of two things happened. When it was a situation where I opened up about something my wife was doing that I wanted to address, it immediately resulted in her becoming upset and the whole conversation becoming about her feelings about my feelings, not about my feelings. When it was a situation where I opened up about something outside of our mirage that was impacting me, she would usually get defensive even when it had nothing to do with her behavior, and often argue that she was actually dealing with the same problem, but worse than me. Then the conversation became about her feelings again. In the end, everything becomes about her feelings and issues, while I'm often left with my feelings unaddressed, and usually in a worse position than when we started the conversation. As a result, I just don't talk about it anymore. There is no possible positive outcome of opening up. I try to be supportive when my wife opens up to me, but it's a one-way street and I don't know if I will ever feel comfortable going the other way again. Story 12. I have to say I learned this lesson the same way others ITT did. My ex-GF was a vocal feminist and progressive, and I thought this would mean she had more progressive values for relations. Nope. She would ask me to be vulnerable with her, but every time I did it would drive her away and make her lose respect for me. Plus, she would use those things against me to make me feel bad about myself or to hurt me in arguments. I learned my lesson. I will absolutely never open up to a woman again. Story 13 told my ex-fiancé early on in our relationship how I was emotionally and physically abused by my dad when I was A, and I still had emotional breakdowns around a certain time of year. One year, it got really bad around Christmas because that's when the worst abusing happened to me. And when I had a breakdown, my ex-fiancé said, maybe if you weren't such a cat, your dad wouldn't have beaten you. Needless to say, she's an ex for a reason. Oh, and apparently we were in a poly relationship, but I didn't realize it at the time. Story 14. I think I saw a comment here on Reddit, forgot what the context was though, criticizing how some men use their girlfriends as an emotional outlet, and it's exhausting for them. I have mixed feelings about that personally, cause on one hand, I think you're supposed to be an emotional support for your partner. But on the other, if you're the asterisk only asterisk support, yeah, I can see why it can get exhausting. Story 15. In my experience, every time I ever opened up about something after much pleading, she would lose just a little bit of respect for me each time. Worse than that, she got what she asked for, but then had no flipping clue how to handle it and just made things a hundred times worse. Never ever open up to a woman about your problems as it will not change anything and she will hold it in a little corner of her brain so she can weaponize it a few months down the track when you have an argument over a cup being left out or some other issue. Story 16. With past girlfriends, I'd usually get something along the lines of man up, don't think about that, that's not important. With the current girlfriend, I get more of a I hope you're okay, Talk to me about anything you want need to. Is there anything I can do to help? The current one is definitely the keeper. And no, it didn't take this to make me realize she's just a keeper in general. Story 17. Okay, whatever. All the negativity in here needs some counterpoint. I was not asked, but cow happened, did become more vulnerable than ever thought possible. She became the rock and went through everything to help me. Still happy. Years after leaving that dark period behind. Went back to me being the rock by default but her being way stronger emotionally than before. Story 18. Showing vulnerability, not only to women, but generally to people, always have consequences. You need to ask yourself a question. Why would you show it to anyone and what good do you expect from it? Because the absolute best result you can get from showing vulnerability is someone being decent and not using it against you or not judging you. If so, why even do it? It is a high-risk, no-reward game. Story 19. It varies from woman to woman. My first ex was pretty okay with it. We seemed to open up we were there for each other and got to know each other on a deeper level. The second one that didn't really help. The third one she used it as ammunition of times later on. She got mad at me for not opening up, but when I did open up, it was used against me as to why I wasn't a perfect partner for her. Not a loss. 
Vulnerability is a strength. You should be honest and own some of the deeper cow that you face in your life and how it's made you as a person today. If you find your girlfriend is using the cow that you're saying against you, she's not the right person for you, and she'll likely never be for anyone else. It takes an apathetic piece of cow to use anybody's past against them. Story 20. I've had a few reactions. My first girlfriend was actually really great about it. She made me feel safe and never used it against me in any way. The last one, though. First time she asked me to open up, I did, and then she got upset, and it turned into me trying to cheer her up. Then when a fight came down the road, anything I said was used against me. Then when she left, it was the same cow. She claimed she wanted me to be open about my problems, but it became clear any time I told her something, it was used against me. That just messed up me up to the point where I'm hesitant about opening up to most people about my issues now. Even those that haven't pulled that cow. Only one friend I have nowadays that I know I can actually trust with whatever is going on in life. And in the end, that's okay with me. We may not be blood, but that man is my brother through and through. Story 21. Just my experience, not worth it. Women have a natural instinct to ask for something and then when they get it, they find a way to twist it and turn it around on you. My wife insists she wants to be open about everything and anything. But when I try that, it always finds a way of causing more problems and gets used against. She wants to be open, but doesn't actually want to accept any of my feeling or feedback and becomes angry and defensive, plays victim. I am always the bad guy and always the one who needs to fix something. Even when she asks me, I can be open and have an opinion as long as it's what she wants. Example. For years she complained I wasn't assertive enough. She wanted me to have more confidence, etc. I've been to therapy for a year now and have worked through some of those things dot to help improve my self-confidence and have a voice. Last night she told me she doesn't like how I've changed and I've become a jerk and not the soft nice guy she married. Story 22. It's so much fun, as you should totally do it. In return, you will get your feelings invalidated or diminished. You'll get a college-level lecture about how wrong you are and how upset she is by what you feel. That's just the immediate response. Then, there's the stash of info in her head where little estrogen elves are hard at work, weaponizing all the newly acquired data to be used against you in the next argument. So cool! Story 23. It's tricky. When I started dating my now wife, I opened up to her about some really tough legal and mental problems I had that made her open up to me too and also got her more invested in me. So it worked okay. But also, you need to know how to balance it because you can also become too vulnerable that they will see weakness and most women get turned off by that. You'll end up like Brendan Fraser and bedazzled, crying into the sunset while so runs off with some Chad. Story 24. When going through the depths of depression, I tried to talk to her. Her response was, stop trying to make yourself the victim. Added bonus fun fact, this was said after I had helped her complete levels 1 and 2 of her counseling course. To become a counselor, counseling people dot people who need help and need to talk. Story 25. Oh boy, I've done this twice and it ended both relationships. The first I was dating long term for three years, we cohabitated. I have a very stressful job but can compartmentalize it enough so it stays at work. My mom was also going through cancer treatment at the same time. I had my outlets like my brother to talk about mom with and dad about my job. I don't like taking about things that make me upset. She would literally start fights with me over not telling her about my workday, about not being vulnerable and not generally opening up to her. I was going through major depression too, I'll add. I didn't want to dump all that on her. One day she just wouldn't relent, so I let her have all of what was bothering me at once. She goes, I didn't mean tell me that stuff I meant, like what do you dream about? What makes you remember a happy time as a JFC? I refused to open up again, and that just made her try harder. She saw how depressed I was and we broke up. Thing is. I was actually coping pretty well considering what I was going through. It was only a problem when she made it one. She was a self-described empath, so the result of me telling her what I was going through resulted in her sulking and being depressed for the next two, three days until I made her feel better. Every time I was upset, I had to hide it because she expected happy music, sunshine, and chirping birds at all times, and knowing I was stressed took away from her well until I filled it up again by listening to her trauma dump. Someone was rude to her at work for an hour. The other girl is one I dated next for about four months. Same thing, stressful job, fed up about BS happening at work, lost much of my friends due to the first breakup and COVID so was starting over. Told her one time that I was having a hard time making new friends and juggling work and dating her. She goes, people who are depressed can't be in relationships and broke up with me. Fellas, don't be vulnerable to your girl. If she asks, everything is great. Story 26. Nope. I've watched so many of my friends' wives and girlfriends use it against them later or lose respect for them for being sensitive or not strong enough. I've also listened to a huge percentage of the women I've known talk negatively about guys they've met. 
oh, I date him, but he's kind of a cat, too emotional. I'm emotional, so I couldn't be with someone as too, etc. It's sad and unfortunate as fudge. But the vast majority of men have the same stories. Story 27. When around seven years ago, I told my wife that I felt crushing loneliness because I felt all my hood friends left me, she said that everyone felt that and went on about her day. I felt misunderstood and devastated by her lack of acknowledgement of my struggle, and this was the final straw that led me to my depressive disorder back then. Since then, we talked about it many times, and while the situation is still not perfect, things got better. So for me, sharing was met with indifference, and it was hard. Can't even imagine my partner using it against me. Story 28. My ex used to naturally get pissed off anytime I opened up about anything that was negative or bad, nothing to do with her, and after I pointed out out she had an absolute light bulb moment and was like, oh cow, so I do I never realized? After that, she was the best person to talk to in the world, but initially hearing a guy open up clearly made her uncomfortable and annoyed, but she couldn't place why. Story 29. My girlfriend and I have a unique situation regarding this kind of thing since we're both therapists and pretty emotionally intelligent. She's never asked me to open up or be more vulnerable because I'm always pretty open with her. I don't consider myself a super emotional person, but I've had my moments of being deep in my feelings and have cried in front of her several times. She's always been very accepting nurturing in those moments and has never once used it against me when she's angry. It's an incredible feeling to let yourself be that open and still be completely accepted by someone. Given many of the comments here, I wanted to share this to say that not all women are rejecting a vulnerability and that you shouldn't give up on finding one who isn't. Story 30. Not just GFs or wives. My mother did this to me when I was younger and in primary school, I wasn't doing too hot in some subjects. I was a bit emotional and my mom asked me what I wanted to do it in the future and I opened up about how I wanted to start my own aerospace business. Keep in mind I'm about 9, 13 years old when this happened. A week or so later when I, once again, am not doing too great at school, she uses it against me. Trust shattered. With my ex, I used to be the emotional rock, but I opened up and it definitely made her act more distant. I know it's not all women though. One of my best friends is a girl and we're both there emotionally for each other. On paper, we should not be friends but life happy and we're both happy to have each other there for us. She opens up to me and I'm really glad to be that friend that she can talk to and I open up to her when I'm struggling. Having a friend that you know you can trust is really special. She is most certainly an exception and definitely the benchmark of what I would expect out of a partner. Story 31. First time she said that this relationship can't work if we are both sensitive crybabies. One of us needs to be strong. Never cried in front of her again. Then three years later, the second time, after she pushed me to open up, the next day she told her entire family during dinner that I had cried last night. Like she pushes me to be open and let it out and be truthful about my emotions. Then she always makes me regret it. Now I really never want to do it again. Story 32. Just to add a more positive data point to this thread, every woman I've been with has only improved my emotional awareness in myself and others, usually dramatically. I feel like I can attribute like 80% of my adult emotional growth to these relationships. There are lessons I've learned in close partner relationships that I've simply never been able to get close enough to my male friends to learn. Specifically with my last relationship, I was able to open up about toxic masculinity and how it impacts my everyday thinking. Her initial shock and subsequent empathy helped identify and validate how crazy those thought patterns can be. It saddens me to see so many negative stories. I can only hope that this is a case of self-report bias and not a true representation of average relationships. Either I've been lucky or we're only reading the worst cases. Story 34. Tread carefully if they have moderate to severe unresolved emotional conflict from their past. It starts off as an opportunity for open dialogue, but can very easily be turned into a one-upper game of, well, my issues are bigger than your issues thing that leaves you wondering, why the heck did you even ask if you're just looking to invalidate my answer type situation? For me, that's a very clear message to keep my thoughts and feeling to myself since I've been fooled into believing I'm in a safe place to share deep feeling without fear of reprisals. If people are asked to be vulnerable, the other person has to be gentle with them in that moment. Don't expect shields to be lowered if you attack often. Story 35. Think about the old men you know, people like your grandfather. Are they open and vulnerable, always revealing how they feel or sharing how they were hurt by an unkind comment? No, they are quiet and emotionally unavailable. We write this off as a generational thing, but there's another reason that old, experienced men behave this way. It works. Many women say they want emotionally communicative boyfriends or husbands, but often it's not true. Their model of the male role from their fathers and other men is solid, reliable, and emotionally stable. So that's what they expect whether they realize it or not. Story 36. 
two separate experiences. Awful and great first the awful best way to describe it if you want male material, that's quite a roundabout and emotional way to get it. The great they noticed that I'm frustrated and upset about something, and simply asked me to talk about it that was the most loving and healing conversation I've ever had. Honestly, we all need to treat each other as people more often. Story 37. It's been very much a double-edged sword. I've really worked hard to share more of my feelings and emotions with my partner, and she's been very receptive to it, so it has helped improve our communication, and it has helped improve our relationship in some ways. And I think we understand each other a bit better, and it's helped us address some issues we had. So those things have been very positive. On the other hand, there have also been a few things that have been less than positive. I've noticed that me opening up to her has triggered me in a strange way to be much more aware of a lot of negative emotions and feelings of vulnerability I have. And I'm not sure I'm really happy about this. I understand that knowing something and facing it rather than ignoring it is usually the better option, but it's left me feeling a lot less in control and a lot more insecure. And it's also led me to wonder if secretly my missus is perhaps exasperated with me or struggling to deal with me sharing more. So swings and roundabouts. It opens up a lot of things that are very positive, but it may also leave you feeling extremely vulnerable and exposed in a lot of ways. Story 38. I would never do that. Not before many years of building mutual trust. A relationship's failure is a failure in communication before anything else. People do make the common mistake of thinking they have to say everything to their partner, which is not the same as having to say everything is necessary for my partner to know. Pretending to be understood by people is a tricky and miserable way to live, especially if you grow addicted to it. Of course, I think that my partner needs to know lots of things about me, because in a deep relationship, many are the details which could make a difference for her him if not known. But the common mistake for most couples is to blindly adapt to that tell-me-everything-about-anything style of communication very early on. If you want to look more into what I've just said and have an idea of where I got it, read the book Liquid Love, written by sociologist Bauman. Story 39. Girl I was with kept telling me it's okay to open up for months, so I started. It was fine at first, but after a bit in every fight, she'd bring that stuff up calling me insecure and whatnot. After about six months of that, I started doing the same to her, and within a week, I was a terrible human being. I'm manipulative, and I was a parasite. Most of these I was called by her and her friends, and took a long time to move on from that tyrant. Story 40. She broke up with me. Not necessarily because I opened up, but she certainly used each instance I gave to her advantage. I opened up about flipping everything, too. My dad's abuse growing up, my depression, my attempt, everything. Got a breakup call after she got drunk on a date where she said, the only mistake I ever made was being with someone who doesn't deserve to be loved. Tore my flipping heart out. Story 41. Oh God, don't ever do this, old Mao. I did, and it slowly ended a 3.5-year relationship. It started as her being a bit more distant, close relationship went from every day to every week to maybe once a month. When it did happen, it felt like more of a pity fudge on her part. Eventually, she just admitted to cheating and broke it off. That's the last time I ever make that mistake. The only woman I'll ever open up to emotionally is my mother. Story 42. Ex-wife used it against me and would berate me if I showed emotion. Um. She took every insecurity I had, every worry I had, and threw it all in my face as the reason she cheated and continued to cheat. One of the things I worry about is being a man like my dad, a drunk who beat my mom. She would block me from leaving and dare me to hit her. When I never laid a finger on her, she told me that, doesn't matter, the cops will believe me. I was trapped. Then the pandemic happened, and I was extra trapped. I ended up in a really dark place and said I needed to go to the doctors for medication because I didn't want to live anymore. My ex came to the doctor's appointment and for some reason was allowed in the room with me and the doctor, and she wouldn't let me flipping talk. She used everything that I had told her over the 10 years we were together to push for me to be sedated or on some really strong medication. I was prescribed a bunch of different meds, and they ended up making things worse, and I had a full mental breakdown a couple of weeks later and tried to jump off an overpass. The day I jumped out of a moving car to jump was the last day I saw my ex in person. Turns out getting away from my abuser was extremely beneficial. Ended up with PTSD and an anxiety disorder. I'll be a while before I try and date again, but I am doing so much better. Story 43. Great, I guess. Thing is, I'm pretty vulnerable everywhere with everyone. I spare people my nonsense, but if they really want to know, sure, why not? I like sharing my feelings with women just to see what they will do with them. Thing is, I think a lot of them expect me to be softer or cry or something, but I'm pretty happy. People putting me down or rejecting me never really gets to me. When I'm sad, I cry my eyes out and don't give a fudge. Most of the time, when my girlfriend asks me what I'm feeling or thinking about, I tell her the truth. And that truth is mostly that I want to fudge her, fight someone, terminate someone. 
build something, eat, cow, or fudge again. But that's me. I'm a cuddly, friendly, extremely well-mannered guy who has never harmed a fly, but mostly I just think of how cool it would be to sleep warm wrapped in my enemy's entrails. I also like to build stuff and fight, like really building stuff. I love to build software and furniture, Yano. I love to fight jujitsu and MMA, so I mean, sharing my feelings has gone pretty good. My girlfriend is still my girlfriend for quite some time and we love each other. She teases me about a lot of stuff and I love her sense of humor. Story 44. Respected my wife to let her in more and it was weaponized against me. Next relationship, which was heavily impacted by COVID and an external stressor, I was labeled weak because I wasn't manly enough. In retrospect, I'm the better for it. My ex-wife and I grew into different people and that is okay. The next relationship, go be happy somewhere else. Story 45. I'm in a relationship, three years, with a great woman I feel really good about most of. The times the relationship has gone sideways has mostly been because I was bottling up my feelings and they'd come out in unhealthy ways. I'd end up hurting her feelings and not even explaining what I really needed support or reassurance about anyway. She's been begging me to talk to her and open up to her, but I've experienced the same stuff in the past that other people are commenting, so it's been really hard. That said, I tried the closed off way and it's hurting my relationship and my sense of self. So I'm going to try being open, direct, and vulnerable. I believe her when she says she can't prove she's a safe space if I don't open up to her. And if that turns out not to be true, I'd rather the relationship implode because I shared what I was really feeling than it implode because I didn't. Even though I don't think it will, it's still scary. Story 46. She used it. First, she used it as a reason to cheat. She said, well, you have secrets. This came after I found her and a guy in our bed together. So then I told her what my secret was. I was, then she used it again. She was cheating with the same person, and they had taken off for the weekend, which I did not know. And when I asked where she was, she got angry with me and started a fight. Started on me about not being there for her when her brother passed away from a candy overdose. Which I was, and I was there for her whole family doing anything they'd asked of me to try to help as much as I could. And I was even grieving, but I understood. So when I reminded her that I was there, she made up something about me saying that her brother deserved it. Though she has changed that story a couple of times. Anyways, then I get a text from some number that said, Keep thinking you've got big balls because you were. It was the guy she was cheating with. Fast forward to this year, and I've had to admit in public, court, for the first time that I was as a reason that this guy needs to stay in his car and not disturb the exchanges when I get my daughter. Story 47. 75% of the time as a dude, IDK how it is a woman, when you tell your significant other something you're upset about, they see it as an invite to air out what they're upset about too and your stresses get ignored. 25% of the time it is listened to and discussed and helped. This is with my fiancé, and this is by far the best I have ever had it. She is the first of many women who legitimately listened instead of just waiting for me to shut up or use it against me in a moment of weakness later. Story 48. It ended up in divorce. I knew better but did it anyway because she was a very emotional and sensitive person. The relationship worked out before because she was the yin to my yang, but as soon as I let my insecurities and emotions show, because I felt like she didn't give a fudge about me, that she was turned off and things ended quickly. Be honest and open with women, but try not to be emotional. Be a strong person they can depend on. Story 49. I've only been in three major relationships. The first two girls I'd been with asked me to open up, and when I did, they would always throw my insecurities back at me during arguments. In my last relationship, she never did that to me and was pretty supportive, but at times, I never felt truly comfortable opening up to her about myself and my feelings because I didn't want it thrown back in my face like the last two times. In general, it's kept me as a pretty guarded person in a romantic sense, which is weird, because I'm an open book with my friends. In general, I've been going to therapy for this and other things, so I can work through this issue. All in all, it's been tough, but not something I can't overcome. Story 50. IDK man seems like if I express my feelings, I just end up comforting my partner for the way my feelings make her feel. It's okay, though. She is loving and kind and amazing in every other way. And honestly, I have pretty much accepted my fate in life as a man. If I can't be strong, calm, reserved, and in control, who else will be? Someone has to steer the ship. Story 51. When I expose my vulnerabilities, both against men and F women, except a couple of my closest friends, they either made fun of me on the spot, later used it against me, or told me what I feel about the situation is invalidated. For example, you feel sad about this in a condescending way. The same goes for all my girlfriends. I always make them feel better when they feel sad or anything about a situation, whether it's about work, friends, or me. But the second I talk about what I'm sad stressed about, it is imminently invalidated. I've had girls break up with me on the spot when I felt bad about what they said to me. You are turning this into a problem? 
kind of way. They try to make me apologize for creating a problem out of nowhere instead of solving the issue. Now I don't have a girlfriend, and I only open up to my closest friends. Even that is rarely. Usually something really big has to happen for me to speak, or I just dump the feelings inside of me. I got used to it. P.S. I have never been asked to talk about what's troubling me except a very close friend. Story 52. I've tried opening up to my wife to then get told everything is my fault and how my actions affected her, which led to her hitting me when I was drunk, which shocked me. I tried explaining it's not that I'm heartless or emotionless or don't love her. It's the fact that my trauma is making me feel like I'm going crazy. The fact that when I joined the army to now, nine year difference, I'm not the same person. I'm not the same man. I'm not there for her. And all I've done is try my best to work my peach off and provide for her and my son. But at the end of the day, I know I signed up for this crazy peach life. Story 53. Never open up to women, ever, because they will either use it against you or they will lose respect for you for not being stoic and break up with you because you can't handle emotions not being Superman. Others say, well, my unicorn wife doesn't use things against me. But that's what it is, a 0.01% outlier while the majority of women are the same. So who will you probably marry and deal with? The majority. Plus, their unicorn partner sounds like their own mess if you're telling me the majority of women are like this and she's not normal. There's been a few studies that shown women lose all respect for their partner and get the ick when women see their man cry because they can't handle life. All my relationships have failed because of being too vulnerable. Looking back, it was like clockwork how I opened up something about my life experiences and they've used it to paint a picture of red flags instead of green flags or no flags. I've learned this the hard way over 100 times. It's don't ask how or why. I'm just spreading the knowledge and hope one person in the world will see this or learn from my mistakes. Story 54. In the moment, I usually have gotten sympathy, but it usually spells the end of the relationship as far as their attraction towards me. Fawayu, I've kind of got unique circumstances since I'm a guy who experienced SA under the age of five. Problem for me generally tends to be that most women have the assumption that men are privileged, especially when it comes to close relationship trauma. And their interest in me as a man tends to sink when they find I'm the one they'll likely have to work to make comfortable instead of the other way around. Story 55. With some previous experiences, women were very open to talking about family issues and whatnot. But if it was about my needs from her, it was not great. Vulnerability about the actual relationship is kind of a different beast because it means the other person isn't able to be a hero, saving you from past trauma. They have to listen and be at least open to change. My wife is the one I found who responds well to both kinds of vulnerability. It's awesome. Story 56. Opening up is hard. It's not easy. But with the right person, it's the easiest and best thing in the world. I never knew how lucky I was until I met the woman I have now. I can't tell her everything with no shame. Just the other night, we had some intimacy issues. I will not go into detail for both of our privacy. And I knew it primarily fell on me and was because of how my brain works. She had tears in her eyes and told me her concerns and her frustrations. I sat there for what like hours, but it had only been a couple minutes. I wanted to say something, but my brain didn't want to let me. Until finally, all I could muster out was, I don't know what's wrong with me. And then the tears just started coming out and I broke down. It was like my mind and body just released and all the emotions started flooding out my doubts and, and my stress and just everything. And this woman, this incredible woman, took me in her arms and consoled me and talked me through it and was so understanding. And now we are working together to have more enjoyable and natural intimacy. And I never would have gotten the opportunity to improve our relationship like this if I didn't open up. It's worth it, man. And if your partner doesn't respect your vulnerability or thinks of it as weakness, then they aren't the person for you. Be true to yourself. And then maybe you'll smile more and carry less. Story 57. I wonder about how I deal with things and talk to my partner about them. I don't feel like I handle everything poorly, but maybe I do. Maybe being angry and sad sometimes is really clear to them. Maybe they want me to talk about it, but I find that I don't especially want to. I don't know where I got the impression, but I have the impression that nobody really cares what I'm feeling. Maybe my partner does. I can't tell if anyone is listening or just humoring me when I talk about what's going on in my head, so I keep most of it to myself. I don't even really talk to friends about it. Story 58. She exploited it and used it in every way possible. I was mourning the unexpected loss of my dad when I opened up to her. In the following year, she would snip at me anytime I was having a bad day where I didn't feel like going out or in a mood to do anything fun. It wasn't that frequent. But whenever it happened, she would pop off with, oh God, who passed away this time or something similar. My dad's passing hit me hard as we were close and ran the family business together. Just going back into the office or warehouse was hard. I wasn't exactly myself for a few months. Hell, I still have moments 
I don't think she will ever know how deep she, and she most likely doesn't give a cow. I eventually left her as she wasn't even a distant representation of the gal I met. I now know through mutual friends that she had a hidden Xanax addiction and ended up in intensive inpatient rehab. I miss the lady she used to be, but life is sometimes cruel. Story 59. I married her because she makes me feel worthy, that my thoughts and feelings are mine to have. She has never used my words or feelings against me. She has been hurt by my feelings, but she in turn is allowed to and explicitly validated. We can communicate as a couple about it. Effective communication is paramount to any relationship. I have said in the past, your reaction makes me feel like this. We then talk it out. Or, when you have the emotional capacity, we need to talk this over. Let me know. Story 60. As a woman, these comments leave me flabbergasted. I love that my boyfriend has been opening up more and more to me and feel like we could talk about anything. I couldn't ever be with someone showing absolutely no vulnerability. We are all humans who need support. And a relationship should be a team against everything else. Story 61. I had girlfriends in the past be weird or judgy about it. Never cared. They were ultimately nothing but a brief distraction. My ex-wife tried to weaponize it. I never got pulled into that BS. That's why I left. Now I'm married to an incredible woman. She's the only person in my life that's never made me feel judged. I feel more love from her than even my parents. Though we've only been married seven years, we've known each other for 37. She knows every skeleton in my closet, and still, I always feel loved and supported. And I do everything I can to reciprocate that love. Story 62. My wife never asked that, but I learned to communicate on my feeling, in a calm manner, and without emotion display. Always thank the things she do that makes me good. Always say when she does something that upset me. The expression of boundaries and my feelings in a neutral display made her be more attached because she much better understood my concerns. Listen of what I said because there is no emotion display and create confidence and stability in her mind. So I do communicate on my emotion, but without useless display. Story 63. Well, my fiancé tells me I can open up and I do sometimes, but I would rather keep it internal and stay strong for her. She does have a lot of anxiety and other stuff, and I don't want to add to her already leaning tower of cow and inconveniences. I come to the conclusion of, it is what it is, and I move on from it, and I just try to remain that solid foundation for my family. The one who is strong intellectually, physically, and emotionally. Because if I crack and break, the whole foundation of the family comes down. Story 64. She cheated on me. Used every word I ever uttered in her presence against me invalidated my emotions, and even laughed at what an abusive foreman said to me even though I was clearly not okay. Then she wondered why I just shut down in arguments and just generally stopped talking to her about anything. Finally had enough of her berating me until about 1 a.m. when I had to get up at 5 a.m. for work. So I told her it was over and slept through the winter in the trunk of my Sentra for six months with the back seat slightly opened so I didn't suffocate in the parking lots of 24-hour gyms and pharmacy. Found a poor little place to call home, and I've been climbing out of that hole since then. Met someone who really pumped up my self-esteem and seemed genuinely serious about me for about a month while we were dating. Had a key made for my poor little apartment in my pocket, and she broke up with me before I could even tell her about it. The two of them successfully knocked women off the pedestal for me. Now I just flat out don't believe a word a woman says if it's even remotely understanding or positive toward me. I do not trust affection and have no interest in committed relationships. Story 65. I'll open up to her, be vulnerable, and tell her exactly what's on my mind. How else would an adult communicate with another adult? If she has a problem with it or sees me as less because of it, I'll help her pack. In my experience, women respond better to a man's emotions when he is firm with them. If she can tell you're worried about her judging you, she will judge you. If she sees you don't care if she judges you, she won't. Story 66. Look, guys, soft, bad person peach men attract horrible women because they know they can take advantage and manipulate. There's no point opening up to women because how the hell is a woman or anyone else, for that matter, going to fix your problems? It's a need-to-know basis. Don't tell them unless they absolutely need to know. Only one able to sort any problems or feeling you have is yourself only anyway. Story 67. I have to disagree with everyone saying they'll never open up to a woman again. You should open up to her as soon as you consider any kind of long-term commitment with her, then see how she responds. If negatively, get out. If positively, congratulations. If you carry the fear, she'll leave you hold it against you because you have emotions, then I don't think she's the one for you. And better to find that out early before you've married and had a family with her. Story 68. I once had an episode with my fiancé, now wife, where I started crying because I was struggling with an identity crisis. The look of disgust and contempt on her face told me everything I needed to know about what was expected of me in our relationship. Now I'm very careful not to show any negative emotions around her, especially when doing so makes me look weak. 
Story 69. I had a phone conversation with my depressed friend yesterday. He was talking in bro code so his wife wouldn't overhear. I was responding in bro code so my young daughter wouldn't understand. Meanwhile, my dad over in the kitchen is giving me the thumbs up because he knows exactly what's going on. Women talk to be understood. Men talk to fix problems. Talking about problems that can't be fixed does not help fix the problem. Putting a fancy label on your despair does nothing except help people understand why you're not here anymore. Problems can only be fixed when people listen and care, enough to actually do something about it. Everyone who wants to listen to men seems to forget that last part, especially women who genuinely do support other women by doing exactly that.